dawn at Antelope Park. At the release site, the progress of seven recently released female lions is being checked by David Yulden. Last time he visited the girls, they were split into three separate groups. David wants to be sure that the pride have regrouped before the dangerous introduction of a male can take place. He's greeted by three lions heading towards the waterhole, Narnia, Nala, and alpha female, Ashanti. And that's Ashanti roaring. And I can only assume that that's because they're now starting to feel comfortable in their area, treating it as their territory, and are therefore letting any other lions in the surrounding areas know that this is their land. But at the moment, I don't have fire here, or Athena, or Kenge, or Kuali. I don't know where they are. But I'm hoping Ashanti will be the one to lead us to them. Having found alpha female Ashanti, David's hunch is that the rest of her pride won't be far away. At the moment, we're just by waterhole one, and this is the favourite waterhole that the lions are obviously using a lot, just based on the, on the paw prints that you can see in, in the ground around here. This is definitely their favourite one. Now, the shanty has already had her fill of water and has carried on down this road. So I'm going to keep on traveling, see if I can find them. Soon, David finds what he's looking for. One, two, three, four, there they are. Just ahead of me, I can see the rest of the pride. A shanty has already got there uh, in front of us. Nala and Narnia are just arriving now. Not quite sure where the other four have come from, but it looks like a bit of a reunion going on. That'll do you. I've found the whole pride, just sitting out, watching the world go by, uh, nice and chilled. So yeah, I'm pretty happy that this pride is, is comfortable in itself. Uh, I've heard them roaring, uh, so I know that they're, they're treating this as their territory. So this pride is now ready to have a male introduced. What happens then really is anyone's guess. Building a breeding pride of lions is extremely unpredictable. David's had trouble introducing adult males to females in the past. Conflicts are often aggressive, and females must be submissive, or they can be seriously injured. Occasionally, males have been known to kill females. But for the project to work, it's a risk that must be taken. Today, another male is ready to take the first step. All lions that are released are radio collared, and now it's the turn of eight-year-old male Milo, an adult in the prime of his life. This morning, he's going to get his collar, and then in the next couple of days, he'll get released in with the girls to our uh, Ngamo release site, um, and then our pride will be complete. Now, this is one very aggressive lion. He doesn't like people at all, but this time round, we have a dark gun. We can get him from a distance. Darting this 200 kilogram killing machine is the unenviable task of Anthony Newell. I've darted quite a few lions who've tried to eat me before, so it's not too much of an issue. The main concern is that the drug doesn't work or you have a bad dart, then you've actually got to shoot him again. It's just going to make him even more annoyed, you know. We dart him, we put a collar on, and then we get the heck out of there. Let him recover, which is no doubt going to do nothing to improve his overall mood and demeanour towards people. So I'm very glad that when we go into the release site and this lion is roaming around, we'll be in a cage. With such an aggressive male, Anthony's extremely cautious, but anxious to take the perfect shot.
Managed to get a perfect shot in, and already I can hear he's starting to calm down. It might take him a little while to fully go to sleep, simply because he has such a high testosterone level, there's a lot of adrenaline pumping through it. It might take a couple extra minutes than normal, but I think he's already starting to feel the effects. Will I be the first one in once he's asleep? Mm. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Is it bad if I say no? Within a few minutes, Milo appears to be asleep but no one can be sure that the drug has taken effect. While the team prepare outside the cage, it's down to Anthony to check that Milo's fully sedated. It's not a job for the faint-hearted. Throwing small pebbles is all that can be done to make the life or death judgment. Finally, the team get the all clear. This is the last line of the Ngamo release pride to get their collar, so this is quite exciting. Uh, and it's not often that we get to get this close to a big male lion. He's so impressive, he's got a beautiful mane, he's in great condition, um, and he's a perfect choice for this pride. He's a strong, powerful lion, which hopefully all the females will enjoy um, and submit to. All right, slip that thing through. Breathing's nice, temperature's okay. Okay, sure that's tight enough? The collar is on. We've administered the penicillin just to help heal the, the dart wound. So in the next couple of minutes, the reversal drug will go in and we'll run. Okay, guys, the reversal's in. Let's spread out. Well, Milo has started to come around quite nicely. It was a smooth wake up. He's still obviously a little bit groggy, um, but he's looking around, he's looking alert. So I'm really happy with how that's gone. Obviously this, at the moment, this is one of the most important lions in the program because he's gonna be the father of the next generation that we actually release back into the wild. And tonight, this is his last night on his own because tomorrow he will meet his ladies. It's been a busy day for David and there's one last task. Three 17-month-old lions are moving ever closer to their chance of release. They've bonded closely as a pride and David's anxious to see them make their first kill. We've come for a walk with a group that we know as the three Ks. Brothers and sisters, one brother, uh, that's Gafara there lying on the ground. He's just been flattened by his sister Katanga. The smaller female is Kenya. These three do have quite distinct characters. Kafara really is a typical male. There's not a massive amount of energy, just sort of plods along, whilst Kenya tends to hang at the back a little. Really, this group is, is led by Katunga. Constantly, she's off to the sides, um, and you can see as she's moving through the grass, you know, she'll lift her head uh, and really be scanning the area around her. She's the real hunter. She's the real leader in this group at the moment. As lions grow older, each individual's role in the pride develops. Within a, a mixed gender litter, the males usually start off being the bolder ones, whether that's just because they're a bit stupid, who knows, uh, but they just kind of blunder around. It's somewhere around the 14, 15 month old mark that the females start to come to the fore. Um, and it's usually one in particular which will start to lead. In the wild, female lions make almost all kills, and Katanga is starting to show signs she could make an accomplished hunter. But her early attempts at stalking leave a lot to be desired. With a herd of wildebeest still 70 metres away, she's easily spotted. And without the help of her lazy siblings, she'll have to work hard to make a kill. Nice. These rocks are a real favourite with the lions on this walk, it's just somewhere nice that they can get up high, get a bit of a viewpoint. There's a bit of a water hole here so they can have a drink. So it's a nice place just to bring them and let them chill out and explore for a while. It's not the outcome David wanted. These lions will have to learn fast or they won't survive on their own. At 
the release site, the big day has arrived. The females of the Angamo Pride are soon to meet male Milo, with whom it's hoped they'll breed. Today is, is a really important day for us because in a few hours' time, we're going to release one final lion into this release area. That is Milo, a fully grown adult and very stunning looking male. Uh, and that will complete the picture. The girls have made this territory their own and have been successfully hunting for themselves. But could the introduction of the new male upset the balance of this well-bonded pride? One female is a particular worry. You know, he's a big aggressive male. What I expect is he'll come out and just try and let these ladies know that he's the boss and hopefully they will all submit very quickly. I do have a genuine fear for fire because submitting to anyone is not really in her behavior repertoire. Then David makes an important discovery. We're seeing quite a lot of playing within this pride, but also there's purring. Now, purring is quite a normal way for lions to articulate a, a bonding, basically. But also, a female that's an estrus will purr an awful lot, and these females will generally come on heat together. With several females likely to be in heat, it's an exciting find. Of course, one large and hairy uh, male lion, the first thing he will pick up on is whether any of these females are in heat. Now, if it is fire, who is the one female that is most likely to hit back, it might assist in that she actually really, really wants to be with a male at this point. All we can do is just let nature take its course and hope for the best, um, which is why I'm going to be nervous for the whole day. At the Angamo release site, there's been an exciting discovery that several of the females are in heat. Now their lives are about to change forever. David Yulden is ready to release red-blooded adult male Milo into their enclosure. OK, stand by. In just a few moments, we're going to release Milo from the holding enclosures that are to the side of the release area here, through a gate about 60 metres or so in front of me. Now, what happens then really is anyone's guess. The females are pretty chilled out. When he approaches them, I think it's going to be really quite a tense thing and we're just going to have to hope that none of them get hurt in the process. Oh, fire, you don't want to be first, surely to God. First to the fence is David's favourite, fire. Rather worryingly, she's just decided to come over and stand virtually in front of the release gate, so that's going to be the first line that Milo's going to see. So I'm a bit nervous, um, but there's nothing I can do. I have to leave it up to them now. So here we go. As Milo is such an aggressive male, the Jeep has been fitted with protective bars for the team's safety. Batten down the hatches. Uh, let's get all the balls back from the fence. Guys, everyone back from the fence. The release is just moments away. Leanne, Leanne, please come in. Okay. Please, would you go ahead, open the gate and release Milo? The females are aware that something unusual is happening and close in on the release gate. Even David has no idea what will happen next. We seem to have a welcoming party because the females are starting to come over, having heard him make a few growls. I think it's taking him a little while to come through simply because he has no concept of, of being uh, free in an area like this, so he's probably a bit nervous. Seeing Milo on the other side of the fence, Fire, Ashanti and Kenge move in for a closer look. Oh, she looks quite excited, actually. Raised, quivering tails communicate to Milo that these females are pleased to see him. Some of the girls are now really excited. Uh, you can see Fire, particularly, is rubbing up and down against the fence. That's tense, eh? Suddenly, Milo is free. Interesting. At first, there's no aggression towards the excited females. Milo's more interested in his new surroundings. It looked like fire 
actually stuck her head into the holding enclosure and that enticed Milo to come out. And then I can see just the females really seem just quite excited that he's there and they're sort of jumping up and greeting, almost enticing play. He seems, frankly, unawed by the whole thing and is now just marching off down the fence line and into the distance. This is where it all might kick off. That's fire at the front. Then Milo returns to greet Feisty Fire, an extremely unpredictable female. The first line up was Fire, and she actually went straight up to him and just scraped his nose a little um, and then lay down in front of him in full submissive pose. Now, that might be because we think that she might be starting to come into Estrus, um, and so She's going to be particularly interested in, in him, but I did have a fear before that she would be really quite aggressive towards him, but that seems to have gone OK. Go down the road, turn left onto the cut area. The initial moments of release have gone well. Now Milo is pursued by seven intrigued females as he sets out to explore his new territory. My nerves have settled. He looks incredible out here. It's, it's, it's a good day. And stop there. David follows at a distance, so the lions can behave as naturally as possible. Here come the girls. At the waterhole, the surprisingly gentle encounters continue. Just a really nice moment where he's had his drink, the girls have all had a drink, uh, I'm not sure where he's going now, but uh, our girls are now settling under their favourite tree. Once they got to the water hole, the females clearly decided it's too hot to keep roaming around, so that's where they've stayed, and Milo's just wandered off into the distance. And actually, Milo will not spend a huge amount of time with the females, uh, maybe more so in, in the first few days, but. Yeah, it's just going to be really exciting to see how they get on and how this pride develops. Next day at Antelope Park, David has received exciting news from the lion handlers. One of the young lions he was with yesterday has made a kill. It's pretty early morning, but I've had a radio call to say that Kutanga, one of our young females, has managed to bring down an adult wildebeest. But I, it's just really good to hear that these kills are being made. The lions are successfully hunting both at night and during the day. This is how the program works, uh, and it can happen at any moment. So lion over, lion kill, we're off to sea. Operations manager Nathan Webb saw the kill. Did the others help at all? Nothing. This grass here, this is where it all took place. Eh? See, this is freshly chewed grass. So this, this wildebeest was eating when she got hold of it. So a proper stalk. Nicely done. And she's doing well, eh? But no, her brother and sister, no help whatsoever. No help. <laughs> Katanga seems to be the main culprit for this group and she's really really doing well. She's clearly used the grass as cover and has stalked such that this wildebeest didn't know she was coming. I mean that's really impressive for a 17 month old lion. And to give an idea of how strong these animals can be, this lion has dragged what is about 150 kgs of wildebeest down into a slightly more sheltered spot where she's now enjoying a very very well earned meal. David's encouraged that Katanga is showing such remarkable hunting skills. One day, this promising lion and her siblings will live independently like the Ungamo pride, who are already successfully hunting at the release site. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten zebra, five wildebeest. Each time we're coming in, we're just doing a count of the various herds of each species that we come across, because that will give us an idea whether the lions have successfully hunted anything. 
There were only 10 zebra in that herd, and yesterday they were a herd of 12. David's using Milo's radio collar signal to track him down. He's keen to see if the new male's spending time with any particular females. I just want to see how is he interacting with the group, and also, is he showing particular interest in any one or two females, in which case breeding might start fairly soon. Signal on the shanty. Milo's quite strong. Oh, there's a second one. There's Milo. Just metres away from Milo are alpha female Ashanti and Kenge. Kenge greeting to Ashanti. These are two lions that David suspects are on heat. During a courtship that lasts around two days, males can be extremely violent, so Ashanti and Kenge will have to be cautious and submissive when greeted by this impressive male. Milo is king of this territory, and the girls do have to show due deference to the king. So as he comes past, they lower their heads, um, and you can just hear from the, the sounds that they were making that they're actually feeling a little intimidated by him. And frankly, who wouldn't? It's so incredible just to be out here and to be able to watch these lions interact and to see that they are acting as you would expect within a wild pride. The successful introduction of Milo to the Angamo Pride's females moves the project one step closer to breeding cubs that can one day be released into the wilds of Africa.